All right, hello everybody. We are back with part two of my Raspberry Pi tutorials. This one's gonna be focusing on activating Wi-Fi from the command line and once again, giving it a static IP address. This is all part of my tutorial on how to set up a Raspberry Pi with an entirely headless setup, meaning you don't need a keyboard, mouse, or monitor for anything we're doing in this series. All right, so in the last video, we actually installed Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi and set up SSH and a static IP address. This means we can connect to our Raspberry Pi's ethernet port wherever we are. However, you might want to be able to use Wi-Fi with your Raspberry Pi. You can still do this entirely from the command line. So to do this, first open up Terminal if you're using a Mac or PuTTY if you're using a PC. So we're just going to SSH into the Raspberry Pi by typing SSH Pi, which is the username, at the IP address we assigned it earlier. If you do not have a static IP address for your ethernet port, you can probably try raspberry.local instead of the IP address as it's got its own name server that's set up, but this might not work for everyone, which is why I would recommend using a static IP address where possible. It's gonna ask for a password. And if you've not changed your password from Raspberry, I would recommend doing so by typing password and changing it because it's a major security hole. All right, so now we do not have any Wi-Fi configured. I'll clear it to give us some space. And so we're going to do this by typing sudo raspi-config. And here it pulls up a BIOS type menu where you can change major settings. So we're gonna go into two network settings by using the arrow keys and enter. And we're gonna hit Wi-Fi. If this is your first time doing this, it's gonna ask you for your country code. This is because different countries have different limitations on what frequencies Wi-Fi can be used at. Therefore, you need to enter what country you're in so the Raspberry Pi does not start broadcasting and receiving at a bandwidth that is illegal in that country. National laws are a little bit strange. So once you've done that, go ahead and enter the SSID of whatever Wi-Fi you would like to connect to. That is the name of the Wi-Fi that you look through normally in a menu. Mine is kinda adult. And enter your passcode. And boom, now it should have worked. You can change other things in this menu, but for now that's all we're gonna be doing. So now let's see if it worked. To see if it worked, we're gonna type IP ADDR to figure out what Wi-Fi we're connected to. And here we can see the LO is your local Wi-Fi. That is your local host. If you're doing web stuff, you'll always test it on local host before pushing it to your network. That way it only breaks it locally and not for everybody else who's using it. The next one here we've got is our ethernet zero. That means it's the very first ethernet cable plugged in. Raspberry Pis only come with one ethernet cable, but if you would have something like a USB ethernet cable, it would be ethernet one because it would be the second one. Because when you're doing just about anything with a computer, counts start at zero instead of one. Kind of like this tutorial series. And finally, we've got WAN zero. That's wireless LAN zero. This is actually going to be important to remember for when we're configuring our static IP address. We're also going to look down here and see that it's been given a IP address from DHCP from my router. So I also like to set up static IP addresses for everything. And generally, I always have the static IP address for my Wi-Fi be one more than the static IP address for the Ethernet. So I configured this Raspberry Pi to be 192.168.1.105. So when I'm configuring my static IP address for my Wi-Fi, I will do 192.168.1.106. It makes it just easier to remember, and that way you don't have to really remember two numbers, you just kind of have to remember one. All right. And so now we're gonna go ahead and want to configure a static IP address for our Wi-Fi as well. So to do this, we're going to type sudo to get root access again, nano as our text editor, and we're gonna configure etc slash dhcpcd.config and just hit enter. 
So this is the same menu that came up in our previous tutorial where we set up a static IP address for our Ethernet cable. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for our Wi-Fi connection. So we're once again going to scroll down. So if you remember from last tutorial, we just simply had to comment out these lines and they already had default values in them. However, this time, since we've already done that once, it's not going to work for us. We're actually going to have to type it ourselves. So we're going to go ahead and make the identical lines, but this time for our Wi-Fi. So it's always good to have a comment. And we're going to do the exact same thing, but replace the values for our Wi-Fi. So we're still going to say interface, but our interface is not Ethernet 0. It's WAN 0. So that means it's WLAN 0. And then we're also going to say static static IP address. And once again, you're going to want to make sure to keep the same subnet. So 192.168.1.106 this time. And it's going to be forward slash 24 again, because we're going to have a very standard network setup. If you're trying to do this at a university or a very large business, you may be using a different subnet mask. Therefore, it might be 36 or higher but you're going to have to figure that out for yourself because every situation will be different. And then for these following two lines, we're going to copy them identically. All right, and that should work. Once again, we're going to do Control O to write, Enter to save it, and Control X to exit. All right, now let's go ahead and see if it worked by doing a sudo reboot. So the connection is going to be closed and we're going to see if it works. So I'll just go ahead and clear it. So I'll give it a second to reboot, but I think this time instead of trying to SSH into the IP address to the ethernet card, we're instead going to try to SSH using the IP address that we just set up for the Wi-Fi card, which is 106. And this is the first time I've connected to 106. So it's making sure I know that. So now let's see if it works. Hey, it's worked. And we would type IP adder. All right, so as we can see here, we have now successfully connected to the Wi-Fi IP address of our Raspberry Pi. This means that I can have it remote and not have to have an ethernet cable going directly to it. You will get a significant performance hit, especially if you're using a Raspberry Pi 4 with that true one gigabit connection. However, for times where you don't need it, it's really nice being able to connect to Wi-Fi. Though I would highly recommend always having a static IP address for your Ethernet card in there. That way, if something ever goes wrong with a Pi, it becomes a lot easier to debug by connecting it hardwired into your network setup. That way, you know there's not a connection issue. All right, that's all I've got for you. Have a good one. Bye.